and it's a sad day for our country. Yes. And I have to ask a question, and I'd like to ask these legislators who voted for this off this god awful bill. If we can give government and big industries the right to inject untested medical products that are zero liability into our children coercively, where does the power of government end? What can they el what else can they order us to do? Everything. Can they do the same thing that they do in China, which is to tell people that they have to abort their babies for the good of society? Can they euthanize people for the good of society? Where is the legal boundary? Where is the rational boundary if we can give government this right, which we have signed treaty after treaty after treaty? saying you cannot force an American citizen or any citizen of the civilized world to take a medication or to submit themselves to a medical procedure right. without informed consent. That's right. What has happened to the Democratic Party? Yes. What has happened to the party that used to stand for listening to women? Yes. Why are they listening to pharmaceutical companies and not for the women. The past two years, the Democrats have been telling us, well, we are the party that stands up against the bullies and listens to women when they've been bullied. And yet, you have all of the members who voted for this, and none of them can answer the question. Where is all the autoimmune diseases coming from? Where, if it's not the vaccines, and where is it coming from? We have, with my generation, according to HHS, 12% of the people in my generation prior to 1986 had chronic diseases. Today, 54% did. But let's pretend all those hundreds and hundreds of studies aren't there that say it's the vaccines. Let's pretend and all the vaccine, every one of those diseases, the autoimmune diseases, Guillain-Barre, cerebral palsy, um, uh, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, the neurodevelopmental diseases, ADD, ADHD, speech delay, language delay, tics, Tourette's syndrome, ASD, autism, the allergic diseases, peanut allergies, food allergies, eczema, asthma, anaphylaxis, where can we find those listed in two places? One in the list of chronic diseases that are now epidemic among American children and on the vaccine inserts. Yes. And why would the company put them on the vaccine insert? They put them there because the only way you can sue them under VICA is if they know or suspect of an injury that's being caused by their product and they fail to put it on the insert. So it's the one place where they're honest. For many years, they've told us, well, just because we put it on the insert doesn't mean that it's actually a vaccine adverse event. It's caused by the vaccines. But the Code of Federal Regulations says you cannot put it on an insert unless you believe that it's caused by the vaccines. So they are lying, and all of these legislatures in here, we went office to office, and we talked to every single one of them. And they know what they're doing. Because we exhausted them. We went in and we answered every question. We answered all the lies that Richard Penn has told them. We answered and we showed them in black and white. That's not true. There are no grandfathering of medical exemptions. This state is doing something horrendous. It is stepping between a doctor and the 4,000 children in this state whose doctors have told them you cannot afford to get a vaccine because it could kill you or it could cripple you. 
their doctor, who's known that child oftentimes since birth, who has reviewed their medical records, who has done all of the tests on that baby, who knows the family, has said it is dangerous for you to receive this product. Don't ever do it. And yet, the state of California is going to come in and step a bureaucrat between that doctor and that child and say, we're going to give it to him anyway. This is criminal. Criminals. Blood on their hands. For many years, I spent my life working on environmental issues. One of the things that I knew about the environment is that it was a war between large corporations who are trying to treat our planet as if it were a business in liquidation, convert our natural resources to cash, have a few years of pollution-based prosperity for themselves, and our children are going to have to pay for their joyride. With denuded landscapes, poor health, huge cleanup costs that are going to amplify over time and they'll never be able to pay. That was my life's battle, because these were corporations that were commoditizing our landscapes. The landscapes that are the Purple Mountains, Majesties, these countries that enrich our children spiritually, culturally, economically, and their health. And when I got sucked into this issue, I saw something a hundred times worse. Not just oil companies trying to pave and commoditize our landscape, A big pharmaceutical companies, the most evil companies on earth, yes. evil. who are commoditizing our children, yes. who are giving our children this tsunami of chronic disease, and then making the money to try to, to tell us, well, we're going to get rid of infectious diseases like chicken pox and measles. Oh, we're going to trade that for rheumatoid arthritis and diabetes and autism and ADD and ADHD and all of those infectious diseases are treatable and curable usually within a week and none of the chronic diseases that they are causing are treatable or curable and they're making 50 billion dollars selling our kids these mandated vaccines that are untested and liability free, but they're making $500 billion a year selling them the EpiPens, the seizure medications, the Prozac, the albuterol inhalers, the rheumatoid arthritis medications, the diabetes medications that our children are now addicted to for life because of these vaccines. And we went through this with all of these Democratic legislatures. They knew what they were doing. And I'm gonna tell you what Henry Stern told me. I said to him, Henry has been, I've known him his entire career. I gave him his first fundraiser. It was all the people in our community who came to that fundraiser and supported him because he made a promise to us. When I called him up two months ago and I reminded him of that promise, he said, Bobby, if you insist on doing this, you're not going to have any friends left. <laughs> I said, I have plenty of friends. I have a good time with friends. The friends you can rely on in a fight. Friends that you want in a foxhole with you. I don't need those other kind of friends. But when I look at that ballot today, of all the people who voted for this bill, I saw all the Democrats voted for it, even the people who told us they were not going to, who knew what they were doing was wrong. And they did it. Why they did it? They did it because of friendship, because that's their tribe, and they decided to stick with their tribe rather than sticking with our children. Right. Right.
And my question is, why in the world did any of you get into politics if it wasn't about protecting children? Why would you do it? This is the party that's supposed to stand up to big corporations. This is the party that's supposed to stand up to women. For women. This is the party that's supposed to stand up to the bullies. This is the party that's supposed to stand up for freedom of choice. When did it become the enforcement weapon of the pharmaceutical industry in its war against our children? So, I told you, I came here a couple of months ago and spoke on the Capitol steps. I told you something that I learned very early on as an advocate, which is this kind of advocacy where you're dealing with the inertia, with the momentum of a giant juggernaut corporate structure that is unstoppable, a juggernaut. It's very hard to slow the momentum because they've captured everybody. They've captured our newspapers, our press. Some of it is paid off, but a lot of the media just has appointed itself, self-appointed itself, as the guardian, as the gateway to protect the American people from dangerous knowledge. That's not the job of the press. The job of the press is to inform the public. Democracy relies on the free flow of information. When you start censoring information, you better look at whose behalf you're censoring it for. Because that is the tyrant. And that's what they're doing. So, this is a juggernaut. They own the press. They own the regulatory agencies. They own, the, uh, they own our doctors, our pediatricians. They own all of it. They, they have disabled the courts and the lawyers, the groups that would be on our side. And they, but they've captured every other agency. Well, how do you stop that kind of juggernaut? And it's like stopping a huge oil-filled super tanker. And I've watched these tankers be turned around at New York Harbor. And what happens is they get four or five tugboats. The tugboats push on the bows. They hit them again and again and again and again. And there's no perceptible movement, sometimes for hours. And suddenly, one of those blows causes it to start turning. And then it flips in a matter of minutes. And all of them work. I don't want any of you to go away today disheartened. We have had loss after loss after loss, and what happens every time we lose? We lost in the assembly, we lost in the committees. We lost in the appropriations committee. We lost in the health committee. We lost in the assembly, we lost in the senate. And we lost in the assembly in the senate again, and what happened? Every time these crowds got bigger, and you women got stronger. And I'm telling you, do not despair. We are going to win this battle. We have plans. We have a strategy. And we are going to sue them. And we're going to sue them. We're going to sue them in the federal courts. We're going to sue them in the appellate courts. And if we need to, we will sue them in the Supreme Court. And what we need from you is don't complain, don't whine, don't cry, organize. To organize, communicate with each other communicate with us and we are we are an insurgency yes. they cannot stop us now we are not going to go away no. raise your hand if you're going to go away no. raise your hand if you're not going to go away we have nowhere to go yeah we have nowhere to go and you know what this is the biggest battle of our lives, and we are privileged to be part of it. You are on the front line of something that you know is important. 
Right. You, my father told me you have to find something to give your life to. And you guys have something, and you know you're right. You know this is the most important battle probably in human history. And you know, from the beginning of our national history of our nation, our greatest political leaders have been warning Americans about the danger of big government. But even more importantly, from the very beginning, from our battles with the East India Company, of Jefferson and Madison and all of our, our great, most visionary, most beloved leaders have said the biggest threat to American democracy is excessive corporate power. Thomas Jefferson, Republicans, Teddy Roosevelt, who said that America would never be destroyed by a foreign enemy. We're too big and powerful, but our beloved democratic institutions would be subverted by malefactors of great wealth who would corrode them from within. Dwight Eisenhower warned America, another Republican, in his most famous speech in history, his greatest speech ever, against the domination by corporations and the military industrial complex, which the pharmaceutical industry and CDC are part of. Yes. Yes. And Abraham Lincoln, the greatest Republican, the founder of the Republican Party, is Republican in history, said during the height of the Civil War, I have the South in front of me, and I have the corporations behind me, and for my country, I fear the corporations more. Yes. What we have to understand, is that the domination of government, the domination of business by government is called communism. The domination of government by business is called fascism. And what we're fighting for are the essential tenets of American democracy, which is free market capitalism, which we don't have. They destroyed the markets, didn't they? They did. There is no market for vaccines because they couldn't sell them. So they had to disable the markets and force us to take them against our will. And for democracy, and they've taken democracy from us. And they've taken the institutions of justice directly. They have gotten rid of the Sixth and Seventh Amendment guarantees, the federal constitutional guarantees for jury trials. We're the only people in the country who you can injure and a private corporation can injure and disable, and you can't get a jury trial. So they have had to dismantle all of the institutions in our democracy in order to make this business function. And they know that they cannot get people to take this willingly. They know that they cannot win this debate on the hustings, in the public square. So the only way they can win is through censorship and coercion. And those are, those are only balls that are meant to destroy all of the tenets of our democracy. What we're standing up for is our children. But it's also all the major democratic institutions that make the world function in a humane and dignified way. So I want to thank all of you for coming out here on short notice to show these guys what we're made of and to tell you we are going to stand shoulder to shoulder yep. Yep. we are going to bring them down yeah.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.